السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله before I begin in the topic itself the, the last time I passed by this uh, this mosque was before it was a mosque Sheikh Abdul uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim was showing we have this land. We hope to make it a mosque. Let's see if people support it. So, mashallah, congratulations to the community for this beautiful masjid and for the beautiful programming that it provides and the beautiful initiatives that it encompasses, mashallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Noble Quran gives us much that is meant to make us reflect and he strikes metaphors and gives us examples so that the guidance can be memorable to us as believers and one of these metaphors is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim the 14th Surah of the Quran about the good word being like the good tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ Do you not see how Allah strikes the example of the good word being like the good tree whose roots are firm and whose branches are in the sky? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, تُؤْتِي أُكُلَهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا It gives its fruit in every season by leave of its Lord. وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالِ وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And Allah strikes metaphors for people so that they may Take heed. Of course, there's. Before we look at the actual tafsir of the, the verse and some of the lessons from it, one of the questions that are not part of the real message of the surah is what tree is this? And, um, you know, there is an underlying Indianness to a lot of religious teachings, in that it was actually a non Indian scholar who said that. It is that the tree is the Indian tree, Indian nut tree. What's the Indian nut? It's the coconut. They call Josil Hind. And they tried, but it wasn't an Indian scholar who argued this case that it's a Josil Hind. Most say it is the it's the date palm tree. But the point isn't which tree it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, do you not see? How Allah strikes the metaphor. This is not this, this not the seeing of the eye, but the seeing of reflection. Right? It's the seeing of reflection. The most immediate address here, according to most of the Mufassirin, is to the Prophet ﷺ himself. In the second person, right? do you not see? It is the Prophet ﷺ being addressed, and by implication, those whom the Prophet ﷺ conveys this to, all of us. Do you not see how Allah strikes the example? But you see the example, the metaphor, through reflection. And that's one of the most important duties that the believer needs to embrace in order to cultivate our faith, which is to reflect, to reflect, and not to be people of the fleeting. Our beloved Messenger وسلم, is described that when he left his home, he would lower his gaze except from that which is of concern to him. So he didn't just look this way and that, even though he would be the first to greet others, even children. If he turned to someone, he would turn fully. He wouldn't turn just with his head. He would turn fully. He would give them his, his chest. 
He'd face them fully. But he would lower his gaze from things that did not concern him. You shouldn't notice what's on, on the billboards. Right? But if you really need something, find out what you need and make an educated choice. Just don't, be a, don't just be a consumer. Um, do you not see how Allah strikes the metaphor of the good word, the kalima tayyiba? This is the statement of faith. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Or it is faith, it, it is belief itself, it is iman itself, or deen. But deen emerges from iman. Right? Do you not see the example of the good word, which is our testification of faith? It is like the good tree. Right? The good tree. And tayyib is good wholesome, full, like a good tree whose roots are firm. So faith itself, the ulama say, is like a seed. If planted, it gives roots. Now you could say that a tree is judged by its fruits. Because what is the point of getting an apple tree if it doesn't give apples? Well, there are secondary uses as well. A date tree that doesn't produce dates. But the date tree without dates is still a date tree. A date tree without its branches is still a date tree. You can even cut the trunk of many a tree and it will still survive. It could well be in danger. If you move a tree you may lose some of its roots. I don't know if you guys move trees here very much. But in landscaping, at least in North America, they do these kinds of things a lot. Do they do that here? So if you move a, like a sapling, in moving it, some of the roots break off. The tree doesn't die, even though some of its roots go. Because the heart of the tree is that subtle reality that was, that is, the seed whose roots are firm and whose branches are in the sky. Now if its branches are in the sky, the tree is upright. The tree is an upright tree. And this is of the many reasons. There's also hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ that there's a tree and the hadith is in Bukhari and elsewhere that there's a tree of the trees of the desert that most resembles the believer. And the Prophet ﷺ asked Sahaba, which tree is it? And they named every tree they could think of except the tree that was probably in all four directions around them, which was the date palm tree. It's an upright tree whose branches are in the sky. And it gives fruit in every season. Some of the ulama said that heen here refers to every year. Every year. And some of the, some of the fuqaha derive from that that if someone swears an oath using this term, it, would, it has... A uh, one year implication. Others said no, heen refers to every season. But the interpretation preferred by many of the Imams of Tafsir early and late is that heen refers to at all times, in all circumstances. It gives fruit at all times by leave of its Lord. But then there's a question that if it's the date palm tree, does the date palm tree give dates at, at all times? But, and the answer is no. Not directly. But they said that dates are preserved. So it gave its dates and you benefit from the dates after. Or you benefit from the date palm tree in other ways, even when it's not in season. That's when, where the Indian argument for the 
coconut tree, which apparently coconuts grow throughout the year. But that didn't work. Because there's many things. There's actually someone who gathered there's a whole bunch of things in the Quran that relate to India and Indians. In Surat um, Al Kahf, for example, Sundus and Istabraq, some of the ulama said that Sundus refers to cloth that is from Sindh. Imam Al Alusi quotes that and said, No one would believe this position except someone from Sindh or Hind. When I read the argument, I thought that makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't, apparently. The great imams of tafsir didn't accept it. So it gives, it bears fruit in every season, at every circumstance, by leave of its Lord. And Allah strikes metaphors for people so that they may take heed. Very often when we look at religion, or our religious practice, we focus on the branches of our religious practice. Our prayer, our fasting, our charity, our observation of the halal and haram, our dress, all these things. And these are critical elements of faith, but these are all branches. And Branches that bear good fruit arise from the seed of faith being rooted in the soil of your heart. Because where is that seed? It's in the soil of your heart. It's in the soil of your heart. So, and what are the roots of faith? Because if La ilaha illallah is that seed, then what are the roots of faith? The roots of faith are what some of the earlier scholars refer to as awsaful iman, the qualities of faith. The qualities of faith. What are the qualities of faith? The qualities of faith are that if you are a believer, you would have hope and awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hope in Allah and awe of the divine you would have gratitude, shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would have steadfastness, sabr. You would have reliance and trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would have certitude, yaqeen. You would have contentment, contentment. You would have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the qualities of faith. Okay? That if that seed takes root and you know, grows in the heart, it gets rooted. This is the strength of the tree, not just the branches. Because you may see branches, but if you're not taking care of the roots, what's going to happen? The tree may be dying, even though it's still giving fruit. Even though it's still giving fruit. So that's one of the first things to pay attention to. And it's one of the tests of many people when they become religious, that initially, and this from the mercy of Allah, that we start praying and fasting, and, do, and these are all religious duties. A tree without its branches is deficient. But a tree without its roots will soon die. It will soon die. A tree could survive without some of its branches. So this is something that we need to pay a lot of attention to. That am I cultivating these qualities of faith in my heart? But also, you have to, you have to take care of your soil. You have to take care of the soil in which your tree is growing. You have to be a gardener to the tree of faith. Okay. Now, you have to realize also that you can't make a tree grow immediately. Even if you give it all kinds of fertilizer, it'll take time. It'll take time. Years to change. Years to grow. Okay. 
And any change that can happen immediately is just fleeting. So th this is something to really take seriously, right? That cultivate these, the, the quali qualities of faith in your heart. How are you with respect to hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? And how much hope should you have in Allah? Unconditional. Because we don't hope in our actions. We don't hope when things are good. Our hope is not in ourselves and our hope isn't in the way things are. Our hope is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our awe, our fear is not of our sins on their own. Our fear isn't of people and events. Our awe is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have hope and awe. Each of these qualities we should be working on cultivating. A gardener who's neglectful of the state of, their, of, of, of the tree, they can't be safe that the tree will survive. Particularly if the tree is growing in a challenging environment. But you can also judge a tree. And what do you judge the health of the tree by? By uprightness. By uprightness. Istiqama. Right? And that's what we ask for in Surah Al-Fatiha. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Guide us to the path that is upright. Right? And what is the test of uprightness? That if the roots are doing well, they're healthy, that the branches of faith, which are, which are the actions of Islam, would be manifest. Your tree bears fruit. Right? So this is something that can be, and as Allah tells us in the beginning of, the, of these verses, these are from Surah Ibrahim, verses 24 and 25. Do you not see? And then Allah tells us that He strikes metaphors, and He closes the verse, these two verses by telling us, and Allah strikes metaphors for people so that they may take heed. Right, so it is a call to reflect. We're just touching upon this component. This is one aspect of it. But also, if you, if you, if you were a tree, right, if you were a tree, where would you want to grow? And don't say Jannah. Like, you know, that's the, the right answer. If you're a tree, you want to grow in Jannah because you'd live forever. But where would you want to grow as a tree? Hmm? Hmm? In fertile land. But you, would you want to grow alone? Yeah, not in barren land. Trees grow best in orchards. Right? Trees grow best in orchards. Even if the land is fertile, a tree that's on its own, even on fertile land, what happens when the wind blows? What happens when it rains a lot? One tree on its own is weak, even on the best of land. So one of the most critical elements to the health of your tree of faith is to be in an orchard. And what's an orchard? It's a community. Right? Because what a community is people coming together for a common purpose. And you're safe, much safer from harm. Just like the tree in an orchard is much safer from harm than a tree on its own. Orchards tend to be walled or fenced to protect them from harm. Orchards tend to have farmers taking care of them. People making sure they're properly ir irrigated. And that's how communities work. Right? That to establish your worship, to establish your religious routines, your other even social activities. 
they're facilitated for you in the context of community. Okay? And that's one of the key elements the Prophet ﷺ said, Alikum bil jama'a, be with the group. Okay? Or you could translate it as be with community. Because jama'a is people who come together with a common purpose. Be with the community, be with the group, and beware of remaining alone. For the shaitan is close to one alone and is more distant even from two. Whoever seeks the vast expanses of paradise, let them hold fast to the group. Or you can translate as you can hold fast to community. And that's also very important. Most people who slip in their faith, in their religious practice, even at a very human level, people who slip in their Emotional well-being is due to aloneness because they cut themselves off from community. And the emphasis on community is such in, our, in prophetic teachings that the Prophet even told us that if people knew the harm of traveling alone at night, no man would travel at night on their own. He's not talking about women. He's talking about men. In the hadith commentary, some of the ulama said this is not talking about the legal traveling distance. Meaning no one would initiate a trip when they can avoid it. You're going back home to be purposeful. Go back home with somebody. And not just because of worldly dangers, but also because human beings need the company of human beings. And the Prophet ﷺ also warned about not eating on one's own. That if people knew the harm of eating on their own, there's other hadiths about if people knew the harms of sleeping alone. So there are of the jurists who said it is makruh to go to sleep alone in a room if you could have someone else staying with you. One, because just because of the hadiths, but secondly, because of the obvious harms of being alone. And there's a lot written about the, the harms of being alone. And social media and other things are not a substitute for community or company. So that's also from the Reflections, if you want to cultivate the tree of faith, pay attention to the state of your heart. Because the seed of faith is ultimately planted in your heart. That's where it's planted. So take care of these qualities. What, do, what does taking care of these qualities require? The water. Of the, the water and the tilling of this comes from knowledge. Like it comes from knowledge. comes from having routines of remembrance and devotion in which you're paying attention to the state of your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that needs constant attention but also pay attention to community pay attention to community that's a brief reflection I wanted to share on this because if you don't the Prophet ﷺ put it very simply he said al-jama'atu rahmah Community is mercy. وَالْفُرْقَةُ azab, And separating is torment. Or separation is torment. So, communities aren't always welcoming. And that's part of the test of life. I'm good at getting myself in trouble. And there is one period where of course, poor choice of mosques, but over an eight-week period, six of the mosques I gave khutbah in, I got in trouble for random things. I went into the wudu area with my socks on just to wash my hands. And someone shouted at me, take off your socks. It was co it's cold. And, in, and Sheikh Dal's from a place actually colder than Toronto. And... Keeping socks dry in winter is, is a, an important concern.
especially if you take your shoes on and off, because you get wet feet, and it's minus, five, minus 10, minus 15, it's on the degrees of misery. But you're not there to feel good. Right? You're there for a higher purpose, which is to cultivate your, the, the tree of your faith. Right? So don't neglect that, even if you're busy. It's very easy to kid ourselves that I'm busy, but then people are doing all kinds of other things and not prioritizing community. Right? We had a dear friend of mine who's spent time here, as many of you know, Sheikh Yahya Rodas. He came to Toronto last weekend, and he's only there for two days. But he realized this person was sick on the west side of town, he went there. Then he found out my wife's parents, both of whom passed away this year, he went and visited their grave. And then there's an elderly East African scholar who's a student of Habib Ahmed Mashur al-Haddad and others. So he went to the east side of town, eight, more than 80 kilometers, and then rushed back so that he wouldn't be late for his session. Why? Because relationships matter. Relationships matter. I didn't go with him on any of these trips. I was sitting doing boring things. Um, but this is integral to, to, to health and well-being. The other thing that arises from this is that in, monitor, in taking care, in being a gardener to the tree of your faith, is look at the fruits. Look at the fruits. Look at the fruits. Because what is it that's causing your religious practice, whether individual or the other things that you're doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to diminish before you were giving more time to the mosque or to some religious project or you're giving more time to volunteer in the community to serve in whichever way of serving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's all from the fruits of faith if those are slipping it's because there may be something going on with the roots or you've allowed the soil to be polluted. So what is it that is polluting your heart that is preventing the fruit to come out as well? And the very last point relates to what do we do together in community? Because when we come together and someone is making sure the washrooms are clean, someone is making sure that things are arranged, someone comes and vacuums, someone organizes this, someone takes, you know, all the little things. We are all gardening together. You, you are helping take care of your own tree, but you're assisting others. Right? Because if the orchard is taken care of properly, it's not just one tree that benefits, the whole orchard thrives. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we take the health of our, of our faith seriously, that we watch over our hearts, that we nurture our hearts through, through knowledge. Knowledge is not about curiosity. It's about having the means to take care of the health of the tree of faith or to have the ability to assist others in this garden of, that is community, that is the ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the best of, of gardeners and grant us wisdom and insight and to protect us from harm. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. You mentioned um, trees grow best in fertile lands like orchards. For those living in Cambridge here, what would be your advice in creating these orchards, metaphorically speaking, of course? So wherever one is, you know, 
look at what you have. They, you know, they say the grass is always greener somewhere else. And you know, there's a saying in Urdu that ghar ki murghi, dal ke barabar, that the, the, the domestic chicken is like lentils, doesn't feel like the real thing. But in, what else do you need in a community if you have beautiful places, you have, a, you have a place of worship. It doesn't have to be beautiful. But you not only have, a, you have places of worship, you have a beautiful place of worship. You have people of knowledge. You have fellow believers. Right? So you have people you can learn from, people whose company you can keep. There are many initiatives here that you can contribute to. Not only in the Muslim community, but in the broader society as well. Because one of the, the ulama gave a very useful definition of good company. That good company is company kept with a good intention in a good manner towards good outcomes. So we have the core company we keep is a company of faith. And without that company, we're not able to cultivate our faith fully. In the normal case, right? if you have the ability to keep faith, the company of fellow believers, etc. That's, but that's not the only company. There's many other types of company that is good, wholesome company. That people who have any wants. You know, if someone's feeding the poor, someone is... You know, we, we have in winter, you know, taking, you know, assisting the homeless or any one of so many things that, that people can be involved in. People are working with, with people dealing with addictions or whatever. Keeping that company in a good, with a good intention, in a good way, towards good outcomes, is good company. So the opportunities of that are, 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 are numerous. Right? And how do you keep good company with the wider society? That's also, Allah loves all the pathways of good. So one should be proactive. Right? And the people of the spiritual path say, your place is where Allah places you. So waiting for imagined opportunities in the future is from the tricks of the, of, the, of the nafs, of the self. That one day I'll go to this dream community. Though the reality is one day you'll die. <laughs> and the only day you have is today. Right? So, so do what you, what you can now. Right? Do what you can now. Um, and, the, this, and the sad irony is those of the, the people who have that thing that one day I'll study, one day I'll learn Arabic. They go overseas, they leave their, work, their career, etc. They go overseas and what happens? Nothing. <laughs> the same things that kept them from, from learning, from studying, from keeping good company, where they were, prevent them when they go to the quote-unquote better place. Which is why the, the time for any of these things is now. And the Prophet also told that the, the shaitan is close to the one alone and is distant even from two. Even from two. Last weekend at Secrets Guidance Canada, we had a retreat, and there's this there's Canadian brother, Ryan. He came from. Nowhereville, Ontario, some this small town that's two hours away, two hours drive away from any other town in Ontario. Ontario is just a province. You can, if you look at the map, Ontario alone could swallow up most of Europe. Um, and he was so excited. Why? Because he's been a convert. He's converted soon after 9/11, but no other Muslim lived in his small town. He was so excited because. A few months ago, he ran into another Muslim. He used to go to the nearby towns for Jumu'ah, for other religious things, to buy halal meat. 
But he was always looking for that elusive Muslim to come to whatever small town he's, he's in. Right? So you, you, you make the most of what opportunity. If you don't have it, you go somewhere else. You, you, every once in a while. And being in a place like the UK, you can go up and down the country in, in a couple of hours. Um, I was just listening, you said about uh, knowledge is not only about curiosity, it's also about taking care about, care about your, uh, you know, finding some means to protect as well and to get uh, work as a collectively within your society. Mm -hmm. Whereas we can apparently see what's happening in people's life, we can ask them. But there are people, those who are going through many, you know, inwardly things, mental status and things like this, which uh, I can certainly say the Prophet Islam during his time, uh, Sahaba did share with him. Nowadays, we don't find that kind of means to express ourselves and to, you know, express and to share these things. So do you think as a mosque, as a community, we should be involving ourselves to find about this kind of things? No, so that no, that's a good question. The, what's the curiosity that, uh, that, is, that I was talking about was, that, let's say someone doesn't know the basics of their religion. They go to an Islamic bookstore, they go online, say, I want to buy a book about Islam. So they find a book about the rise and fall of the Abbasid Khilafah. But you don't know how, <laughs> how to pray. You don't know why you're a Muslim. So what do the Abbasids have to do with you? Right? Now, it's important to read about history and to be a cultivated believer, but there are priorities. So that's the aspect of curiosity. That in seeking knowledge, you give priority to what do I need most to be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be a better servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes it's not clear, it's good to consult. Caring about others is not idle curiosity. But rather it's important. The Prophet ﷺ described, He used to watch out for his companions. That's one of the reasons why he used to walk behind his companions. So if you notice someone was in need, someone was going through a difficult time, etc., he would notice and it's important to have cl close relationships. And you need to cultivate that. Visit one another. Invite people to your house. Visit other people, etc. These, these sunnahs are not abrogated. These sunnahs are not abrogated. It's very important. They say a sign that your relationships are good is that if your friend is sick, you know that they're sick. If your friend is going through difficulty, you know that they're going through difficulty. If they're going through hardship, you know. And, and it's always been challenging. It's not like our times are no more difficult than other times. If anything, we have so much that it's so much easier. Uh, that's always, it's meant to be a challenge, but we need to really seek that out um, as best we can. If you notice that your tree is starting to die, that the leaves are yellowing, the fruits are disappearing. What should be the first point of call um, that one should do when they notice this? One of the things to do is to consult. Okay. One of the things to do is to consult. Okay. When, you know, when COVID began, my doctor, who's a wonderful man, he called and said, Sheikh, Sheikh Faraz, if you have any symptoms, go straight to emergency, call me on the way there. I have whatever, immune compromised, whatever. I said, sure. I didn't ask him why even. I have a good doctor. He takes things seriously. Him and my wife are uh, collude with each other to make sure I stay on the straight and narrow when it comes to health things. So one of the ways to simplify life is to know whom to consult. And there's simple things that, you know, okay, I kind of slacked off last week and wasn't doing all my sunnah prayers. Okay, I'll do them. So there's straightforward things. It's like you have a headache, you take whatever you take for a headache. 
and straightforward. But there's things that are more complicated. An important thing to be clear about is that consulting is not weakness. Consulting is strength. Why? Because by consulting, you are acquiring the ability to make better choices. Ultimately, it is you who's making the choice. But you want to be able to make a better choice, so you consult those who know. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعَلَمُونَ Ask the people of remembrance. The Prophet ﷺ said, the only cure for confusion is to ask. And one shouldn't feel shy about it. Just go up and we have, we're blessed to have many people who, whether it be locally or regionally or internationally, that one can reach out to. And if they don't answer, you ask again. Maybe they missed your text message. Maybe they didn't even see it. So you, you just ask again. They don't respond. Go somewhere, somewhere else. If your heart's palpitating, if the, if the hospital doesn't take you in, you go to the next hospital. Like, you're not just going to die on the street. You're going to do whatever you can. So similarly, uh, one should take the means. At the same time, one shouldn't be too hard on oneself. Right? That in, in the journey um, of the believer to the akhirah, a lot of times it's like, the ulama say it's like sailing at night. You don't exactly know where you are on the journey. And very often, when you feel you're completely failing, when you look back on it, those are the best of days for you. Why? Because imagine two people entered the masjid. One person did Qiyam al-Layl. They were prayed at night. And at Fajr they did all the whole, like the, the PSR, the perfect sunnah routine. And they did dhikr till sunrise. And they prayed two rak'ahs. And they recited Qur'an. And they attended the dars. And they did this. And then they went and helped old ladies cross the road and all kinds of other things. And they gave in charity. And they come to the masjid. And they're looking around, all these slackers and tourists and stuff. And, they're, and they walk in feeling all haughty. And there's another person who comes in brokenhearted. Because they messed up. They set the alarm, but it played in their earphone. And they took their earphone off and put it on the side table so they didn't get up. And they just, then they slept through their morning routine and they'd volunteered at the food bank but they slept through that as well and they got into fight with their mother and they crashed their dad's car <laughs> and they did all kinds of things and they walk into the masjid broken hearted which one is better with Allah? ultimately you don't know but very often our successes are a big tribulation because how is it there may be some spectacular fruit, but what's going on to the, with the soil? And very often, when Allah is testing us with difficulty, with failure, if we are repenting and correcting ourselves, we may be benefiting in ways we can't imagine. Right? So one should always have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's straightforward. If you mess up, repent. Repent and rectify. And return. That there's no condition that you have nine opportunities. Cats have nine lives. The, the believer has a lifetime. <laughs> right? the, the door of repentance is never closed. Right? There's no condition. You, of course, you have to have urgency because at some point you could lose that you know, even the fact that you feel bad that you messed up is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you should have gratitude for that the fact that you sinned you fell into a temptation and you feel bad about it that's iman that's iman you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one should never let the shaitan overwhelm you that I, I'm messing no if you are repent that's it sincerely repent and say, okay, what do I do next? Right? 
So, and sometimes it's not so clear, so consult. But at the same time, if there's raw sewage entering into your orchard, stop it. And that's one of the, the key things. That what is it that's causing the harm? And get rid of it. And that takes courage. And sometimes it takes sometimes it's straightforward. You say, Yeah, you know, I'll cancel the subscription to whatever fitna.com that you're subscribed to. And maybe you decide to do something else. I told that to a friend of mine <laughs> when I was overseas, and every night he'd come after Isha and hang out at my house. Initially I'd give him some food, whatever. After a while, I just opened the door. <laughs> I gave him a key. Said you can only use this key to lock the door. Do not enter. Because I'm married. You cannot enter the house with this key. But you can exit the house with this key. He said, if I stay home, I'm going to do haram things. I'm going to sit in your living room. <laughs> Whatever. Eventually, my wife very kindly advised him to go consult someone elder. <laughs> and he did and never came back. I hope it helped him. Um, she didn't say don't come. She just said, why don't you... Why don't you consult somebody? And um, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate for all of us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma rabbana hab lana min ladunka rahma wa hiya lana min amrina rashidan ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma inna nasaluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalin yubaliwana hubbaka ya Rabbil Alameen. Wallah, we ask you for your love and the love of those you love, and the love of an act that will enable us to attain unto your love, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah, oh Allah, we ask you for mercy for ourselves, for our parents, for our teachers, for our families, for our friends, for our communities, and for the entire Ummah of your beloved Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask you for mercy to those for those in difficulty and distress, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you for mercy for those struggling and suffering and particularly for the people of Pakistan in these difficult times and the people of all lands that are troubled and that you grant us the clarity and certitude to view trials for what they are. For you surely only, for you surely send tests and trials to those whom you love we ask you that you make our trials and the trials of the Ummah of your beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the trials of those whom you love, that you grant us the responses of those you love. But we ask you with no objection for lutf, for your subtle grace and afia and rahmah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.